Before this video begins, I would like to give a quick thank you to my Asbantium level patrons Fallon Cortez and Nathan Gibson. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. Throughout Doctor Who's very long history, it has explored an incredibly vast array of settings. From the distant past to the far future, and from Mars to parallel universes, Doctor Who has proved that, much like Paul White, it is a big show. But I've recently started to think that maybe the show needs to revisit a few of its more iconic and interesting settings, turning them into regular occurrences. After all, some of them are far too good to appear for only a single episode or two. It's my firm belief that, despite it lessening the variation of settings, it would actually make the show's universe feel a lot bigger and more lived in. But how would it be done, and what settings would even be revisited? Well, naturally, that's what I'm here to explain. Shocking, I know. So, buckle up and get ready to see the stars, because today it's time to look at what might just happen if Doctor Who decided to shrink itself down just a little bit every now and then. And of course, be wary of spoilers for the episodes on screen right now. So when it comes to the settings of Doctor Who, it's important to mention the show's most common and frequent setting, Earth itself. It's obvious why the Doctor always ends up on Earth, because it's our home, the planet we live on, and the place where you're currently sitting in your boxes watching YouTube videos. Seriously Jimmy, put some trousers on. Naturally, the bulk of stories in Doctor Who would take place on Earth because it's what we know, something and somewhere we can relate to. And obviously it's where they have to film too, unless you know of any production companies based on Mars. There's nothing wrong with Earth-based stories on their own. They help to tether the show to a sense of reality we can comprehend. However, it's hard to deny that the modern day UK setting has started to wear a bit thin. It obviously makes sense, but I like how the Chibnall era tried to diversify its Earth settings with more international stories like Demons of the Punjab, It Takes You Away, Praxius and Legend of the Sea Devils, among many others. But I still think things could be taken even further, because there's no reason why we can't have an alien companion from their own planet, which gets the Earth treatment of it being the main central focus the protagonists keep gravitating back to. Think of a companion like Nyssa, but with Traken becoming an anchor for the show, a setting the main characters regularly interact with. After all, it's not hard to immerse an audience in alien worlds, they're not stupid. Well, not always. Star Wars has made Tatooine, Coruscant and Mandalore into living, breathing alien worlds you care about and connect with. So why can't Doctor Who do the same? It is easy for audiences to suspend their disbelief and immerse themselves within alien worlds. They just need to be given the opportunity and the writing needs to keep them interested. But what kinds of other planets could Doctor Who choose to focus on more? Well, there are a few options. First of all is Peladon, the classic Who planet which was one of the first settings to actually be reused, appearing twice in the Third Doctor era in quite an interesting way. The Doctor's second visit was in the future with a new companion, so his first visit has faded into myth and pretty much no one recognises him because it's been 50 years. Both Peladon stories share a lot of themes, being seen as political allegories to events in the UK at the time. But by having these deeply political stories take place on an alien world, they feel less ham-fisted and all the metaphors work better because there's a degree of separation. The viewer ends up less biased because it feels like neutral territory, unlike our own world as a location, which would cause fans to immediately become coloured based on their own biases. And purely on a narrative level, it's just nice to revisit the setting after the first story, because it has that familiarity as a planet. We already know how things work there, and the existence of characters like Agador and Alpha Centauri the Federation Ambassador. Rather than being just a one-off planet you never see again, you really get the sense that this is a fully-fledged world within the universe, part of a wider Federation. It becomes somewhere you can actually care about and it feels rich with history and lore. You can't really get that when a planet simply stops existing after an episode. Real significant events took place in that 50-year gap between Cursor Peladon and Monster Peladon. It didn't just cease to exist and that does so many wonders for world building. It's a setting that Big Finish even revisited in a full-blown dedicated box set, so it's clear that fans care about Peladon and it's a planet ripe to be regularly featured in Doctor Who media. The modern equivalent of Peladon is probably New Earth, which is one of the most interesting settings in the current Doctor Who universe because of how well it was already fleshed out in its two appearances. There are named characters like the Face of Bo and the Duke of Manhattan, who have clear roles and reputations on the planet, along with their sisters of Plenitude and Catkind, who are the humanoid cat aliens we see living on the planet. This alone makes it more futuristic and alien than Earth itself. Sure, the planet is basically just Earth but with flying cars, but all this added 
law and the world building pushes it to a more interesting level and makes it its own thing. Much like with Peladon, audiences can transpose or project themselves onto the setting and easily accept it despite it being another planet in the far future. I genuinely think episodes like Kill the Moon and In the Forest of the Night would actually work a lot better if they were based around New Earth instead. A big problem with those episodes are the incredible leaps of logic and the ridiculous scientific stretches of the imagination. They just don't feel like they could ever really realistically take place in or around Earth. However, those problems would disappear if it was all taking place on New Earth instead, a setting we aren't permanently tied to and there's no reality to compare it to. We don't know how New Earth's moons might work, so the plot of Kill the Moon would feel a lot less ridiculous. It's still a setting we care about as viewers, so the emotional beats of the episode still hit effectively, but the negatives are minimised a lot. I just think there's a lot of potential in New Earth as a setting. It's the kind of futuristic Earth with flying cars and everything we'd expect, but by being a completely different planet, you don't have to worry about putting a date on anything, since it can never really become outdated or aged poorly. I mean, Kill the Moon is going to be out of date in like 20 years time, so you know, that wouldn't have happened with New Earth, unless, I don't know, someone who is watching it in the year 5 billion is, is like, nah mate, what, what are you talking about? That doesn't exist. You're crazy. But you know, if they're 5 billion years in the future, I think they'd be able to understand. Another great thing about New Earth is how it feels like a living and breathing world within a wider empire like Peladon so many years before. There's a huge significant change in the planet between series 2 and 3, with the entire surface population being wiped out during that gap, something we only see the aftermath of. The planet feels completely different in Gridlock, the two episodes are very unlike each other in tone and setting. New Earth takes place in an affluent, sleek, white, utopian hospital, whilst Gridlock is a lot darker, grungier and dystopian. The stark contrast in these two episodes shows just how much potential there is with the planet as a regular setting. There's so much you can do with it, seeing so many different aspects of life there and all the different kinds of settings you can do. There are the traditional skyscraper, future cities, but also the slums and also natural spaces like forests. So anything that can be done on modern day Earth can also be done on New Earth whilst maintaining this sci-fi otherworldliness of it all. It's simply the perfect kind of setting for regular appearances, like how it was a main setting in the Worlds of Time MMO, and the Testimony Foundation from Twice Upon a Time was created on New Earth. The planet is basic and simple on the surface, but there's so much depth to be explored with this world 5 billion years in the future where cats and humans intermingle, where the grass smells like apples and cars fly through the sky. It's a beautiful futuristic planet and it's begging to be explored in more depth, with so many wonderful and interesting stories to be told. Although, that being said, let's not talk about Big Finish's tales from New Earth. Yeah, no, let's just pretend that never happened. Peladon and New Earth are pretty much the only recurring settings we've had that aren't hugely significant in the politics of the wider universe. I suppose there was Stormcage, but I don't really think that counts because it was only ever short cameo scenes. However, there are loads of one-off settings I would have loved to see more of. Starship UK from the Beast Below is an absolutely fascinating location, and I feel like it's similar to New Earth in that you can tell so many very different stories in the location. The Beast Below just gave us a glimpse into life on the Starship, but there are so many other areas on the ship we never got to see, all ripe for stories on their own. The Rings of Acton is a similar location, which provides some truly gorgeous visuals and a a sense of alien society, but we only got to see it for one single episode, so it feels like a lot of potential was wasted by only using it in a single story. Doctor Who is full of alien worlds, but when you only spend 45 minutes on one, it usually just becomes a basic setting with no real depth. By opening them up for recurring stories and multiple visits, they become a lot more interesting and feel more real. It really helps with the world building of the Doctor universe, allowing you to properly understand how life operates on these alien planets and how events unfold off screen with a proper time scale and realistic consequences. Probably the two most significant and important recurring planets in Doctor Who are Gallifrey and Scaro. Scaro was the first alien world the TV show ever visited, so it would have a huge amount of significance even if the Daleks weren't involved. Although, to be honest, if they weren't, the show would have never taken off to begin with. Seeing the Daleks' homeworld so early on has caused it to come back quite a few times afterwards. On TV, it showed up in Evil of the Daleks, Genesis of the Daleks, Destiny of the Daleks, Remembrance of the Daleks, the 1996 TV movie, Asylum of the Daleks and the Series 9 two-part opener. Along with this, it has appeared in an absolutely absurd amount of audios, comics and books, cementing its status as one of the most visited planets in the entire Doctor Who media landscape. 
After all, the Daleks are the Doctor's biggest enemy, so it really helps with the universe's world building for them to have a permanent home, a terrifying stronghold at the heart of their empire. There's a lot of narrative weight for a story to take place on Skaro because the viewer knows what that represents. Sure, the planet itself is just kind of a post-apocalyptic desolate wasteland, but as a general location, it carries a lot of significance and makes sense as a permanent part of the Doctor Who universe. I wish we could even have some sort of clear location for the planet within the galaxy so we could get a sense as to the space the Dalek Empire covers. It's like how in Flux they alluded to, you know, the Dalek Sector, the Cyberman Sector, and the Santaran Sector, but, you know, not actually telling us where any of that covered. But even without knowing where it is, knowing Skaru is a planet out there in the universe is always a brilliant, terrifying piece of world building for Doctor Who. And yes, I know I'm saying the word world building a lot. But even Skaro pales in comparison to the appearances of Gallifrey, which clocks in at an astonishing like 15 appearances in the main show and countless more in expanded media. In the Classic Who era, it was a bit of an anchor, a location for the Doctor to occasionally come back to or be dragged to against his will. It's the main character's homeworld after all, so it's nice for it to be a regular feature, a permanent fixture of the universe. Not only is it significant as the home of the Time Lords, who are, you know, one of the biggest and most influential species in the entire universe, but it's visually interesting too, with its orange colour scheme and beautiful domed cities. It's futuristic and just all in all a perfect sci-fi setting, with otherworldly architecture inside and out. That being said, I do like the story Russell T Davis told about its destruction, removing that baggage from the show's lore ahead of its reinvention in 2005. It lent a lot of emotional weight to the Doctor as a character and created a great new backstory for him. This all made it so much more significant and impactful when we finally did get to see it in episodes like Sound of Drums and The End of Time. That's the power of, you guessed it, world building. Because you know, world building is exactly what it says on the tin, it's building a world and establishing these kinds of planets and their societies. But all that being said, I would have rather the show either stuck to it being destroyed or it being back permanently, rather than bringing it back just to destroy it again. Expanded Media has shown just how ripe Gallifrey is for stories, with a big Finnish Gallifrey series featuring all sorts of political intrigue and drama, while there's all sorts of history and lore to pull from as well, with stories like Longbarrow and the Timeless Children using the setting to delve into the history of the Doctor and the Time Lords as a wider species. The Time Lords in general are kind of boring, I can't lie, but I always love the idea of Gallifrey being a permanent part of the universe, somewhere we can occasionally visit and have interesting adventures. Expanded Media has kind of milked Gallifrey dry, but with the right writers and ambition, it could once again become a shining narrative location and centerpiece for the Doctor Who universe. With a show as big as Doctor Who, it's hard to maintain a consistent universe with planets and galaxies balanced in tandem. Sure, there are many named planets like Sontar, Zygor, and Raxacoroco Phalopatorius, all homeworlds of alien villains, but their locations aren't really set in stone. It's not like Star Wars, where everything is carefully mapped out and you know exactly where every single planet is in the galaxy and how close it is to certain other planets. Sure, Raxacoroco Phalopatorius, Clom, and Polymus are all stated to be at the edge of much. A spiral, also known as the Milky Way. But then other stories contradict this, saying Raxacoroco Phalopatorius and Klom are in the Isop galaxy. Unlike most other pieces of science fiction, Doctor Who has no set canon of sorts. You know, things are constantly contradicting each other and nothing ever adds up. You can never put everything in a cohesive universe and timeline. This isn't necessarily a bad thing because, you know, it's a time travel show so it's hard to keep everything consistent, but it does impact world building because you get no sense of where everything is in relation to each other. Just play a game of Stellaris with the Doctor Who mod and tell me it isn't satisfying to have everything properly laid out with a visual guide. It would be so satisfying to see what regions of space actually make up the great and bountiful human empire, or the many Dalek empires. It would be amazing to see what star systems the Centauran route on war actually takes place in, or how close certain planets actually are to Earth. These are all simple ways to enrich the universe of the show without really taking too much out of stories. There are countless galaxies in the Doctor Who universe, with none of them mapped out, and that's a huge shame. I'm not someone who believes everything has to be put into a box, everything has to be explained, or, you know, we have to get a piece of lore for every single minor character in the show. But it would be really nice to get a consistent Doctor Who universe, where we know exactly how close places like Peladon and New Earth are to our own home, even if they are in other galaxies. It's just great to, you know, have that measuring tool to kind of build around and structure stories to 
actually take into account these things. Revisiting these locations creates a deeper, more immersive fictional universe, allowing us to regularly see new adventures within the familiar confines of an established world. I'm not saying the show needs to cycle through the same locations all the time. <clears throat> Tatooine. But rather than like four Earth-based episodes every series, maybe give one of those spots to a recurring alien world to broaden the scope of the show and deepen the sense of other planets having the same kind of history and depth as our own. Anyway, that's where I stand on the idea of Doctor Who reusing planetary settings. What about you? Do you think we need to see more alien worlds appearing? Should we get more consistency in the locations of all these weird and wonderful planets? Let me know in the comments and I'll see you next time. And a special thank you to my Bantium level patrons, Fallon Cortez and Nathan Gibson, my Platinum level patrons, Maximilian Foreman and Nick's Games, and all my Gold level patrons, Boots, Calvin, Daniel Shilato, Franz Horn aka Line Vortex, Herner Verzog, and Tom Azar. Thank you so much for your support.